All right, guys, we're back at it again. Josh's offer is next door to us, and a lot of people have been asking us a lot of questions about his tank. His SPS are blowing up. It's looking amazing. You guys know he had an issue maybe like three months ago where there was a little bleaching episode. There was a couple things that happened, a little disaster. We're going to put the link below so you guys can go check what happened. The tank now is back in full swing. It's overgrown, and I convinced Josh to get the tank, the actually 60 gallon tank, to move into a 125, and it's going to be setting up a really big frag tank. So I'm going to be showing you this is the last update of Josh's tank before he moves it so i want you guys to check it out how nice it's looking we're going to be asking him a bunch of questions let's go inside let's go see him all right so we made it we're here in front of josh's tank what's up josh again again i know what's again going on? nothing so a couple days ago we installed the lights on my tank yep. and we were talking about my tank and everything's doing good everything's doing bad or what changes happening and a lot of people been asking a lot of questions about this tank and this is basically the last update to so we got a 125 here yeah this is the one that we had back in the break room yeah so this tank was running our break room and we needed the space so we took it out cleaned it up and you started with uh what is this what kind of media is this on the bottom that's a reborn reborn same as this just a little bit bigger so we put a bigger thicker reborn and then you put a couple rocks in there tank has been cycling for what about three months i would almost say more more so, yeah because i didn't even have these rocks in here before it was just rubble on the bottom yeah so basically in the past month or so you start testing some coils i see a nice monty pour i grabbed the monty a different type and across the one i see a jaw breaker here a couple jaw breakers in the middle a bunch of zoantis that was all the stuff from this frag rack over here. It was just too just much. Testing. So since we're going back to this one, the reason for upgrading is I've been harassing you now for a while, telling you you're out of room. You're like, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. And on the beginning, he wasn't going to put this many corals. Yeah. And he kept on putting more. And I told him, I said, man, my tank is going to have like 10, 20 aquaphorus max, and they're going to grow really big. I was lying, guys. He made fun of me the other day. I literally got like 50 of those things on top. It's just an addiction. You can't help it by just to keep on adding in. Is that what happened to you here? Yeah, I don't do Pokemon, but I guess that's the comparable, right? Collect them all, yeah, right? Yeah, collect them all. So anyhow, what's the size of this tank? Uh, it's 48 by 18. So Forty inside inside from this panel to that panel is only like 13 inches. So, so it's like a 60 gallon tank? It feels like a 55. It feels like a 55. I was going to say that maybe because 55 is only it's a little deeper than a 55, right? Barely. Barely. One of the main reasons why you're moving to a bigger tank is you having a tough time working on this thing you were telling me. Yeah, I've got bubble algae. I've got aptasia and all that stuff that's hidden in the back and I can't even get to it. I literally have to do everything with these. Just it's, tough. It's just too small. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. I mean, I really like the dimensions of the tank. I feel like it's a it's a nice tank, but it just needs to be bigger are you worried about moving all this livestock into this tank oh, i'm terrified is that why you've been waiting so long yeah so the zoas are doing okay over there the mushrooms are doing okay that's why i put that monty there because it's the only real stony that's in there and i still feel like i not entirely comfortable with it but it's you, better than nothing you have a game plan somehow or just time well so that that rock is a mature rock okay the rubble was dry when i put it in there four three four months ago whatever it was and i feel like the rock is enough to, okay, to account for something there's a fish in there there's crabs there's snails the water's testing fine so my hope is if we move everything from here to there with the exception of the gravel i think it's going to be a uh, smooth enough yeah because you got all the bacteria on the rock and stuff like that i hope so so since you talk about it so on this tank Mm -hmm. One thing worth mentioning, you started this tank barely anything before me. As a matter of fact, that you can consider them basically around the same time. August of last year. Yeah. Okay. This tank shows a decent amount of more growth than mine, mm -hmm. right? What I'm trying to explain to people at home is like, you grab these rocks that were completely cycled. They were always underwater. Oh, they were super mature. They were super they mature. They weren't just cycled. They were mature rocks. They were mature. So it's very important that we tell this to our audience because there's a difference between dry rock, completely dry. Mm -hmm. Rocks underwater, they can have some type of bacteria and rocks that are completely mature. Mature is the bit, they, they can be in a tank for well over a year up to whatever amount of years that you can get. So the rocks were very mature. The, the media in the bottom, which is the pebbles, mm -hmm. those were mature as well. Yeah, that came from the bottom of our cured live rock bin. And how long did it take you before? I, if I'm assuming it was only like two months before you were already putting acroporas in there? Yeah, I think my first batch of acros was like 20 pieces. I remember as clear as day looking at you and being frustrated. My tank literally wouldn't, I couldn't even keep corals alive. Fish, I couldn't keep fish alive. That how much, that's how much of a cycle I was going through. Mm -hmm. it I was put just, all my fish in at one shot. 
put 20 corals in the first shot and mm -hmm. nothing Nothing changed. happened. It was able, like, you had enough bacteria to withstand all that waste mm -hmm. that it was being produced by all those the animals. Only, the only fish that I've added in here since was the copper van and the, the clownfish. Have you had any issues since we're talking about the copper van with that guy going around picking at corals out of nowhere? Uh, yeah. What does he pick? The Akins. I've got a little patch of Micromuso over here. Does he pick up the micros or just the Akins? Uh, he picks at both of them. Both? Just, he doesn't, it, it's not, doesn't discriminate? Well, it's not bad where he's ripping off tissue right now, but I see him eating all the little tentacles. So what are some of the biggest challenges that you encountered here in the past year and then changed since you've been having this tank running? Because the corals are getting taller now, I can't even get my gravel back down in there to clean in the, in the gravel, so that's pretty dirty. So you do clean your gravel? Uh, just the front section here. I haven't cleaned mine and I think... I can tell. Yeah. Ooh. There's a lot of like fine detritus down there, mm -hmm. but I see so many like those little brittle stars, like by the thousands. Oh, I'm sure they're so, doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah, so I'm wondering if it's, that's part of it because there's so much food that I put in there. I keep putting this Nutramar pellets. And it's really fine. It's fine. And a lot of you have some of them. You yeah. put them in a different container there. Yeah, it's an old container. So but when you like, feed them in there. It's like dust. Yeah, you can feel like dust. And then these pellets too. I really like this food a lot because you can, you can make it more powdery as you sit in there. Or chunks. Or chunks of pellets, you know? So it's really good food. You guys keep hearing me talk about it because I really believe on it that much. I've been super happy with it. All these fish, are they all going here? No, I think I'm going to put a different batch of fish in here. Okay. Because I think these guys are going to go in the frag tank. So. Okay. A uh, customer of ours is, is a good customer of ours. His name is Matt Colasanti. What's up, Matt? He was cutting kind of off, he would, went and did an installation at his house and he had this big frag tank, he didn't know what to do with it and I said, we'll take it, we'll put it in Josh's office. It is huge. How big is this thing? Four by four. Four by four, maybe four even bigger. Four. So basically, you're going to have this 125. It's going to be a bigger version of this. And then we're going to have the frag tank, right? Well, if you look at the rock work, it's the same exact rocks that I have here. So, so it matches the... It's going to match. So I'm hoping that I literally just transpose everything from here to there on the left-hand side where there's no rocks. I mean, it should look the same. It's just bigger. What would you attribute the success to? Well, you already mentioned it was super mature rock. Okay. That was number one. Number two, I'm pretty diligent about water testing and that's something how often that were you testing your water every week every week every okay week. what were you testing for uh calcium alkalinity magnesium nitrate phosphate and salinity okay so all, all main all six main mm -hmm. components but i think that's the biggest thing i mean look at what happened to your tank the the routines are the same the feeding is heavy and what happened phosphates went up it went up i got i got too comfortable that's the truth yeah. i was feeding and feeding i didn't see the numbers moving I was doing water changes weekly, then I moved to every other week because I said, man, I'm feeding and feeding, I don't see no numbers mm -hmm. move. And then I went a month without water change, and one day I came back from a trip, and there was red slime all over the tank, there was green hairy algae, mm -hmm. and I had to do a red slime removal treatment. I have to scrub all the algae, I have to crank the skimmer away, I did a big water change, I cranked, I turned off my lights for a day, and it's all gone. After a week, I sold it all. And it's real world problems like this stuff happens to every single person that has a reef tank but the one common denominator is if you test your water you know what's going on yes so uh -huh. that's really honestly that's been the only key here i made one small mistake and it didn't like kill everything so that was huge gotcha if it wasn't for that this tank have been on autopilot the whole time because i'm aware of the water chemistry and water changes do you do water changes every week every week how much it's a third of a 50 gallon brew and you do it every week every religiously week. we're sticking mm -hmm. with it so right now my primary source of everything is calc wasser so are you using that as an auto top off kind of yeah it doses 1.9 mils per minute okay. so that that fills my top off and it gives me calcium and magnesium or calcium and alkalinity and where are you keeping your calcium and alkalinity at uh the calcium is right at like 440 430 um, my alkalinity right now is 9.5 which is higher than i normally keep it when my elk swung it went really low right all right but that's because i keep it low already okay. so normally i keep like a 7.5 to an 8 so you decide let me keep it around nine nine and a half so if it drops it drops to a seven seven and a half yeah so now the demand is here in here is high think about how much acro there is versus how much water volume oh it's a lot yeah, if my, my elk isn't dosing the day, is pretty it heavy. falls, yeah. Especially when it comes to corals. Right. I have a four-pack Versa under here. Okay. I dose on top of the calc washer. Now I have to have calcium and alkalinity. Okay. And magnesium. Okay. And then I also run the Acro Power. You run the Acro Power. So you do A, B, C, and Acro Power. So Acro Power mm -hmm. is basically, basically amino acids. Correct. And how often are you doing your amino acids? It's 40 mils over the course of the week. 
What about some of your feeding routine? What are you feeding on this tank? The Nutramar pellets I feed a lot. Okay. Um, I feed frozen food once a day and then that Nutramar pellet for probably three to four times a day. So I've never been a big, been a big fan of all-in-one system because I feel like they're great in the beginning, but once you outgrow the tank, mm -hmm. it becomes a little tight. Do you feel the same way about this, this tank? Eventually with the filtration became a little tough for you to work with? Honestly, I like, I'm glad that I did this because I I learned a lot. So the filter socks in the back are non-functional. There's there's no filtration in Same this tank at all. There's not. Mine has just got a protein skin. Now, I wasn't running that before. There's LG and Aptasia back there. That's it. That's it. Honestly, I don't think it does a damn thing. I think I no. could turn the, the lights, or I'm sorry, I could turn the return pumps off and it would do just as good. You know, and on this new tank, are you planning to attach this to the frag tank, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming? Yeah. So and now you're going to run a protein skimmer on, on us because yeah. it will be a much bigger system, correct? So I want to be able to keep softies, LPS, you know, SPS. Yeah, so all acros here and then over here in the corner in the frag tank, everything else. Oh, and I can cool. do so higher can light and higher flow. flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. I like here, here I'm struggling with that. I've got you feel you that gets sucked into the power head. Yeah, it's happening to me over there. Little tentacles go flying. Yep. And then they land on a coral and they sting the coral. Yep. And then down here, I've got some really nice Yumas and I like them. And I, the bounce mushroom, of course, I like them. But, but the flow is a little too much. Let's talk a, lot, a little bit about these corals. Um, got some uh, St. Thomas mushrooms, some St. Thomas bubble mushrooms. There's one rainbow one in there. It is simply incredible. You got some bounce rhodactis here. Yeah. Got a bunch of cool monties. Obviously, acros all over the place. Something worth mentioning, you got a the torch here and another one over there. Mm -hmm. You got two out of the three that we got in house. It's something hard to get a hold of. We've been working years to get a hold of some of those rare corals. Well, we have that really nice one. Yeah, so I'm saying we got three. You got two out of the three. Well, you should talk about that one. Yeah, well, you it's, guys. It's the best one ever. I mean, so, I'm so sorry. he's super excited. So about two years ago, we got a hold of uh, kudos to Route 66. We acquired it to them, to uh, Eric and Alonso. Uh, they were able to get a hold of a torch that it was half gold and half uh, holy grail. I'm yeah, gonna tell you half holy grail. Half gold. Yeah, like the best gold you ever seen and the best holy grail you ever seen in this little grafty. We started with one head about two and a half years ago, I want to say roughly. And today we were able to finally separate two different heads. One is in my tank, one is in the farm. The other one is in the 1500. We can post a picture on the video. I'm sure we can find it. Yeah. The other head, I think, Josh, we should give it to you once this new tank comes here. Can you see that? Does it come out on camera? Can you guys see that? That's seriously the best one ever. Literally in the We history, believe it's one of the best yeah. corals ever that we got a hold of. We're super excited. We've literally been cooking this thing for two and a half years. Anyhow, I got a, I got a head on my tank. There's one in the farm. I'm thinking we'll give you that head to put into this tank. Mm -hmm. No, nope, into that tank. Yeah, into Accuracy. this tank, you're right. So when is this transfer gonna happen? I would guess in the next week or two. I just really wanna see how that Monty does because that one stony in there is my real only gauge. You know, because this is this is stony gotcha. and those are softy. So why don't we record the process? It will be cool. Yeah. So Watch the tank and just record it. So we're gonna film when this happens. We're gonna bring the frag tank here. We're gonna break this one down. We're gonna add to this one and then I'm gonna show you that process and then we're gonna show you like what, three or four months after that once everything's nice and settled. So you guys can see all the pains and all the, the things that we gotta go through to make this happen. Yeah, it should be cool. All right, cool. All right, Josh, thanks for having me over, bro. The tank looks good. Keep up the good work, buddy. Thank you. All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Give us a like. We'll see you guys on the next episode.